Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Kitchen Design Webinar. My name is Nick, and I'll be doing the presentation with you today. Just like all of our previous webinars, everybody will be on mute. But if you do happen to have any questions at any point during our class, please feel free to go ahead and type them into the questions and answers section. And at the end of the class, I will go through and answer any questions that may have come up. Also, at the end of the class, I will be sending out an email that's going to contain a document that covers everything that we're going to be talking about in today's class. Should you happen to have any questions while going over that document, again, please don't hesitate. You can reach out to our support department and they will be happy to help you out with any of your questions. So again, today's class is on kitchen design and Envisioneer offers many great tools that make designing a kitchen space quick and easy. And the design possibilities are endless. You can have the Kitchen Builder Wizard build a complete kitchen for you automatically, or you can also insert individual cabinets, uh, cabinets, appliances, and fixtures to complete your own custom design. In today's class, we're gonna go through, we're gonna look at how to add a kitchen in using the Kitchen Builder Wizard. We're also gonna be looking at inserting individual cabinets. We're gonna be looking at how you can customize those cabinets. And then we're also going to be inserting some custom uh, kitchen elements as well. So first, let's take a look at the Kitchen Builder Wizard. So right now, you should be able to see my screen. And I'm in a 3D view right now, just showing the kitchen space of where we're going to be adding in our kitchen. I'm going to go into a 2D plan view so that we can see this area a little bit clearer in that plan view. So our kitchen is actually going to sit in this U-shaped area right here. So the Kitchen Builder Wizard is going to step you through a series of screens that enable you to choose the style of kitchen, the orientation of the appliances, and the finish of the cabinetry and the counter. It then arranges all the necessary components together so that all you have to do is point and click to insert your kitchen. This is an excellent tool if you are just showing a basic layout of where the kitchen is going to be you're not completely looking to customize a kitchen, you're just basically showing a layout. This is an excellent tool for that. If you are going to be adding in a kitchen and you want a full custom kitchen where you're gonna be able to control all the individual cabinets, you're gonna be doing that by inserting the individual cabinets separately. So I'm gonna show you how to do both, but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna insert this kitchen uh, builder. Uh, sorry, use the, inserting the kitchen using the kitchen builder wizard. So first, let's go up and we're going to select if again, if you like to use the menu tab, you can or the menu option, you can select inserts and under insert, you will see the kitchen builder option. If you like to use the buttons underneath the building tab, you'll see this little button here. This is your design wizards. And if you use the little drop down beside it, you will also see kitchen builder. So whichever option you're comfortable with, select the kitchen builder wizard option and you're gonna get the Kitchen Builder Wizard welcome screen. This is just a screen welcoming you to the wizard itself, and it also lets you know exactly which wizard you've opened up. So as you can see here, we have opened up the Kitchen Builder Wizard. We're gonna say Next. Once we select Next, it is now going to ask you to select your kitchen style. So again, we've already talked about the style of kitchen that we're gonna be adding in, and you can see here we have L-shape, galley, and we have a U-shape. We've already talked about how this is a U-shaped kitchen. We're gonna be inserting a kitchen along these three walls. So we're gonna select the U-shape. If I was only inserting a kitchen along two walls, I would use the L-shape. And if I was inserting a cab uh, kitchen in a galley format, uh, two parallel walls, then I would use the galley format. I'm gonna select U-shape. I'm just gonna simply press next. Now it's gonna ask you to select a general kitchen layout. This is essentially your kitchen triangle. Where do you want your appliances to be located and how do you want them to be oriented? So here you can see we have our stove, our sink and our refrigerator. So where do we want each of these elements to sit in relation to our design? In our design, I want the sink to be here. It's gonna have a window here to look outside. And I want my stove over on this wall and my refrigerator over here. So I'm going to use this option right here. This option, when it is rotated, 
we'll put the sink here, the stove over here, and the refrigerator over here. So now that I have this option selected, all I have to do now is select next. This is where you can select the general kitchen theme or the type of cabinets that you want to be using. We have a set of predefined options that are already in here for you. And I just like to simply right click in this little preview area. And I like to use rendered outline. When I select rendered outline, I get a clear image of what it is that I'm inserting. And here we can see that this is just a gray recess panel. And I think this is gonna look pretty good. So I'm gonna use the gray recess panel option, but you can step through and you can see all the different options that are available that you can apply to the cabinet itself. These last three options are just image files attached to the face of the cabinet. So these will actually scale um, based on the size of the cabinet. So this is just an image. This is, does not have the actual detail to it. It is just a picture file attached to a flat panel. These ones here are actually going to show you the depth. Um, so you'll actually see the actual recess in the cabinet itself. So again, I'm going to use the gray recess panel. I'm going to select next. Now that I've selected next, it's going to ask me to select the kitchen rotation. So once again, we've already established that I want my sink on this wall, my stove on this wall, and my refrigerator on this wall. So based off of that description, I know that this is the locate or this is the rotation that I want for that kitchen. This will put my stove, sink, and refrigerator in the exact spots that I want. I can then say next. Once I select next, this is going to bring up the completing the wizard. So this is the last step before you insert the kitchen. So if you want to make any changes, this is where you can select the back button and step all the way back to make any kind of adjustments. If you're happy with all of your choices, simply select finish. And now attached to your cursor is going to be this chalk outline of where the kitchen is going to be inserted. I want to move this kitchen so that it snaps to a corner. Now, I also have collision turned on in the lower right-hand corner. Collision will prevent me from inserting objects inside of other objects. And it also snaps my cabinets so that the back of the cabinets match up with the back of the wall or with the face of the wall. So this is gonna snap that kitchen in. So once I bring it in, I snap it to that corner, I left click once. Left clicking once has again established that that's where I want the kitchen to start from. And now what I can do is I can now use my snap tracking tools and I can place this kitchen exactly where I want. So I started in this corner, I'm using my snap tracking option. So again, snap track is enabled down here. And I was going to use that to again, place this kitchen exactly where I want. And I'm going to see that gray dotted line that runs horizontally across my screen. And all I have to do is left click and it's going to place that kitchen in. Now, once I left click, it's going to bring up this uh, dialogue and it's asking you, are you satisfied with the placement of the kitchen? If you're not, you can select no and you can reposition it. If you are happy with it, simply select yes. And what that will do is it's now going to create that kitchen for us. So again, this is a quick and easy way to insert our kitchen into our design using just basic cabinets for the design itself. I'm going to go into a quick 3D view so you can see how this kitchen looks. So we can see now that we have our kitchen added in. And I'm just going to turn mine into a rendered outline view so that we can see this kitchen a little bit clearer. So it's going through and it's added in all the different cabinets for us. And again, it's just filling in cabinets based off of the spaces. So that's why I say this is more of a, if you're looking to do a layout of a kitchen, just basically showing cabinets, you're not too concerned about the actual look of the kitchen, then the Kitchen Builder Wizard is a great way, a great tool to quickly add in your cabinetry. If you want to be more custom, you're going to use the cabinets option. And that's what we're going to look at right now. And I'm going to show you how to insert cabinets individually. And we're going to do that by adding in a island. So let's go into a 2D plan view. 
And again, we're gonna use the cabinets tool now. So individual cabinets can be inserted into any portion of your model. The catalog has a full selection, but you can also create and customize cabinets to suit your design needs. Islands are going to be inserted using individual cabinets. So to insert an island, when designing a kitchen with an island, it is recommended that you leave between 36 and 42 inches between the cabinet and the bank of cabinets to ensure that there is a good working aisle. You can insert temporary guidelines to help you place the island the correct distance away from the cabinets in Envisioneer. So essentially what we want to take advantage of here is anywhere where a door is going to be opening, we want to leave about 42 inches between the bank of cabinets that has an appliance with an opening door and the cabinet itself. For anywhere that is just a working aisle where we don't have any kind of doors opening, you can get away with a 36 inch aisle. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert a 42 inch uh, line on the left and the right side of our screen. And then we're gonna insert a 36 inch from the bottom. Now you can use dimensions to do this. I personally like to use my line tool. So I'm gonna type an L on my keyboard and that just simply activates the line command. Now I'm gonna select a corner of my cabinet I'm going to left click once and then I'm just going to bring this line out and I'm going to type in 42 inches and I'm going to hit enter. That's going to bring that first line in for me and I'm going to place that in. So that is now 42 inch aisle right there. I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to go up. I'm going to select L for line. I'm going to select this bottom corner. And this first line that I'm drawing is just an extension line. I don't need to worry about typing any distance here. I just want to bring it out in this direction. And then I'm going to move my mouse up. And this is where I'm typing in 36 inches for the three foot mark. And now I'm going to stretch this line all the way through my model. And I'm going to say repeat. Now I want to be 42 inches away from this refrigerator. So I'm going to get close to the refrigerator as I can. And I'm going to go in and say, I want this to be 42 inches. And then we're going to drop this in straight down. And then we're going to say finish. So we've now created a working aisle that is 42 inches from here, 42 inches on this side, and 36 inches on this side. Now that we have our guidelines added in, we can now start to add in our cabinets. So let's go up and under interiors. So I like to use the tabs when I draw. So I'm going to select the interiors tab. If you like to use the menu, you can go up to insert and you can select under interiors. You can select cabinets. Under the interiors tab, I'm going to select cabinets. And in the catalog on the right hand side, I'm going to go to the uh, kitchen base cabinets folder. So I'm going to go to kitchen base cabinets. And then I'm going to open up the base island cabinets. So I'm just going to open up base island cabinets. From within here, I'm going to select the double door or I can select the door and drawer subfolder, depending on the type of cabinet that I want to insert. I'm going to use the door and drawer option and I'm going to grab a, uh, let's just do a 24 inch cabinet. And I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to snap this in on this line right here. Now, what I can also do is I can place this in and I can move it around after the fact. So here I can take it and I can say move and I can place it so that it sits right on the edge of that line. Now that I have that cabinet placed in, I can duplicate this cabinet or I can add in different cabinets to again, adjust how I want this cabinet to look. So let's add in another one on this side. So I'm just going to take this one, I'm going to duplicate it over to here. And then let's do two more. So we're going to go duplicate one there. And then I'm going to duplicate one there. And then that's going to leave us a space in the middle. So I can type in DI on my keyboard and I can measure out what this distance is. So this is three foot four and seven eighths. So I'm going to add in the same cabinet 
duplicate. And I'm just gonna kind of move this one into the middle here. And then I'm just gonna go into the properties and I'm just gonna make this cabinet three foot, four inches wide. I'm gonna change it to be a double door with a single drawer. And then I'm just gonna go into the details. And I'm gonna to start to adjust the actual door itself. So the leaf of the door, I'm gonna make that two inch rails and styles. That's gonna match the cabinets that we were working with. And I can do that for both the door and the drawer. So I'm gonna change that to also be two inches, but I do need to adjust the drawer height to accommodate that change. So I'm gonna change my drawer height. I'm also gonna change the door spacing to be half an inch. And then I'll just change that to be two inches. So I've now added in a new island that's gonna be a 36 inch island with a single door and a drawer. We're gonna say with double door and a drawer. And then we're gonna say, okay. I'm gonna move this cabinet into place. And then I'm just gonna move all of these cabinets back together to create our kitchen layout. So now what we're seeing is a island that has all the cabinets that we've added in. I'm gonna go back into 2D. Now that I have added in those island cabinets, I can remove the dimension or the dimension lines or the drafting lines that I've used. And I can just simply select them and press delete on my keyboard to get rid of them. We're now gonna look at customizing some of the other cabinets in our design. So if you don't want some of the cabinets at the kitchen builder inserts, you can select the individual cabinets and delete them. You can also move cabinets to make room for other items you want to add to your kitchen. For example, we're going to remove the cabinetry over the sink to accommodate a window. So right here, we have our kitchen sink and I have all these upper cabinets that sit above the sink. Well, we want to delete these ones out. So I'm just going to simply select them and I'm just going to delete them out by pressing delete on my keyboard. Just a tip here, you can also multiple select. So you can hold your shift key down and multiple select the cabinets and then delete to delete multiple elements at the same time. So now what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the cabinets on either side of the sink. So we're going to select this cabinet here. I'm again going to hold my shift key down. I'm going to select the cabinet on the right hand side of the sink. I'm going to go into the properties and I want to take notice of a couple of things. So the first thing I'm noticing is the height. It's two foot six inches high. If I click cancel and I go elevate, I can see that it is sitting at seven feet high. So that means that the top of the cabinet is at seven feet and it's got a two foot six height. So we're going to go into the properties and we're going to adjust the actual height of this cabinet. I want this cabinet to have a height of four feet. We're going to change the height to be four feet. By changing that cabinet height to be, oh, sorry, we're going to change that to be four foot eight inches. And what we're doing is we're essentially just changing the actual height of the cabinet itself. Then we're going to go to the leaf tab. Now, under the leaf tab, this is where we can control what the leaf of that door looks like. And again, I like to use rendered outline just to help visualize what it is that I'm working with. And here we can again see that my rails and styles are set to two inches, but I want this to be a glass door. So I'm going to select the glass one option, and this will now show me the glass door as a recessed option. Now I can adjust how many panes I want, horizontal or um, vertical, and I can adjust those values. I'm gonna leave it as it is. And then under details, I can also increase the number of shelves. So I'm gonna go in and say, I want there to be two shelves. I kind of want the shelves to match where the panes are. So I'm gonna try and get those as close as possible. We can also control the hardware. So right now it's inserting with a circle hardware. You can change this to be box or cylinder, and you can also adjust the placement of the hardware uh, in the design as well. 
If you want to add in your own custom hardware, you can do that. I would recommend turning off this option here so you're not gonna show any hardware at all from the base cabinet. And then you're gonna insert your own hardware and elevate it into place. It, that is going to be a little bit more of a custom option. You are gonna to have to add in each piece of hardware individually, but it will give you that customized look by showing the customized hardware that you're adding in. I'm gonna change the name here just to be uh, our 56 inches here. And then we're just gonna say, okay. And I just wanna make sure here, 56, yeah. So we're gonna say, okay. And that's going to change those cabinets for us. Now, when I take a look at that in my 3D view, I'm going to see that my cabinets are now way up into the space here. And if I select those two cabinets and I go to elevate, I can see here that it's now set at the nine foot two height. Now, I want to adjust where these cabinets actually sit. So if we go back down to the seven foot option, we're gonna see that it's now going to bring the top of the cabinet to the top of the rest of our cabinets here. So that's gonna bring the base of the cabinet too far down. I want to adjust that to be seven foot eight, and that should bring the base of the cabinet down to sit on top of my countertop. I'm going to have that little projection above, but that's okay. That's what I want for this design style. I'm going to hit escape on my keyboard and I can now see each cabinet. Now this cabinet, the handle is on the correct side. On this cabinet, I can go in and I can actually adjust the properties of it so that it is a right opening door. And what that will do is it's now going to take the door handle and flip it to the right side. So I don't need to mirror my cabinets. I can actually just flip the swing of the door of the cabinet so that the hardware is opening in the direction that I want. These cabinets that we see here, the Kitchen Builder Wizard did not have a cabinet that could fit in there. So it's gonna automatically insert what we call filler cabinets. And what we can do is we can say, well, I don't want a filler cabinet in here. I actually want an actual cabinet. So we can go through and we can either select them and adjust them. So we can go into the actual properties. And instead of being a spacer or a filler, we can say, well, I want this to be an actual upper cabinet and it's gonna be the correct size, but on the leap, I'm gonna change it to be the size that I want. So now we're going to see again with the rendered outline option under details, we're going to show the hardware and we're going to say, okay. And that's just going to change that door for us to be what we want. So again, in the properties right now, it's set it as a spacer. We want it to be a true panel door. So we're going to change that. We're going to change it to be under leaf We change it to be recessed with the two inch rails and styles. And then under details, we're going to include the hardware. And then one more time, properties, leaf. We're going to change that to be uh, recessed, two inches. Oh, I forgot to change it to be a door. And then under leaf, we're going to change that to be two inches. And then details, we're going to make sure we include the hardware. So that will change those cabinets for us. So we're now getting an understanding of how this kitchen is starting to take shape. Now I'm going to add in a navigation camera so that I can walk around this kitchen a little bit. So I'm going to change this camera's name to be navigation. And I'm good with the six foot six, but I do want it to be a rendered outline view because again, I like to see the lines that I'm working with. So we can now see our cabinets. Oh, and there was one more here. So we're going to adjust this guy again to be a leaf with a panel that is two inches. And then the door is going to have a hardware on it. We can again, remove cabinets out if we want to above our stove. So we can go in and say, I want these cabinets gone. 
and maybe I want to have a separate cabinet above here, then I can go through and I can add in my own cabinets to sit above my refrigerator of my above my stove. So here I'm going to say I want wall cabinets, so kitchen wall cabinets. Uh, we'll do the 18 inch height and actually let's do double door. We'll do uh, 12 inch height. We'll do a 36 inch and we'll just bring it in so that it sits over top of our door there. And then again, we can make a couple of adjustments here. So I can go in, I can type in DI on my keyboard to measure this out. And I can see that that's eight and a half inches. So I'm gonna select this door, right click properties. And I'm essentially just gonna add in eight and a half inches to this door leaf, uh, sorry, to this cabinet. So we're gonna add in eight and a half inches here. This is gonna be two foot 2.5. So that's going to change the size and we can decide if I want that to be a single or a double door. And then we're just going to change this to be, uh, this is 30 inches high, not 18 inches wide. We're going to make this, uh, we're just going to say 26 inches wide and we'll say, okay. And then what I can do here is I can move it into place. Now, right now, it's throwing a fit because I have collision turned on. It's saying, well, it's not going to fit in that space. So what I can do is I can move this cabinet out of the way for right now, move this cabinet back in. Now I can move this cabinet in. And all this is doing is it's essentially just moving all of our cabinets into place for us, and it's snapping the edges together. And now I can measure this end. And I can say that that now is nine and a half inches. So I'm just going to select this cabinet properties and we're going to go in. I'm just going to delete that one out. I'm just going to duplicate this guy over. We don't need to reinvent the wheel here. And we're just going to drop that one in like so. And we're going to get rid of an inch and a half. And we'll leave it at that. We'll say OK. And then we can bring that in like so. We're again, just a little bit too big. So we're gonna go down. There we go. And then I just changed the name of this one to be the 24 inch cabinet. So now again, with our navigation camera turned on, we can now see the new cabinets that are added in. And then we can elevate any cabinet that's incorrect to the correct height. So you can customize all the cabinets that you have added in or that are already added in. You want to make adjustments to them. You can do that fairly quickly and fairly easily by just selecting the cabinets themselves. We're going to add in another cabinet over here just above our refrigerator. And again, we're going to go into the navigation camera just to make sure. And we are going to elevate this guy down again down to the seven foot mark. And I'm just going to go back into 2D. So now that we've adjusted our cabinets and we have them where we want them to be, now we can start to look at some custom kitchen elements. So once a kitchen has been built by the wizard, you can add custom elements and touches to it. For example, we can insert a wood panel on the outside of the refrigerator for a nice, clean and customized look, or we can create custom countertops. So let's go in and let's add in a panel that we're gonna use on the side of our refrigerator. So we're gonna use a member to do this. Now you can use a member or you can use a column. It's really the same thing. It really just all depends on what you're comfortable uh, working with. For anything that I feel is more of a, a vertical uh, member, I will use a column for that. Anything that's going to run horizontally in my design, I will use members for that. So in this case, I see this more as a vertical piece. So I'm going to use a column. So I'm going to go back into my building tab. I'm going to select columns and I'm just going to grab a column. I don't really care what it is. I'm just going to grab a column and I'm going to place it in. Once I have the column added in, now I'm going to start doing some of my math. Well, I know that this cabinet is seven feet high. So I know that this panel needs to be seven feet high. I want to know the actual 
depth of this cabinet. And here we can see it's one foot. So I'm gonna say that this panel, based on the measurements that I have, is going to be a rectangular solid. It's going to be, I'm gonna make it, uh, let's just do three quarters of an inch. And then we're gonna go in and we're gonna say it's gonna be one foot and it's gonna have a height of seven feet. So we have now added in and we've created a panel. And I'm just going to change the name to call it bridge panel. And I'm going to say, OK. And so all that's actually done is it's just created a column and it's now added it in at the heights that we've determined. And now I'm just placing it where I want it to go. So again, when I look at that with the navigation camera turned on, we're not going to see it very well till we get to the side here. And I can now see that new panel along the side of my refrigerator. It is using the wrong color. So what I would do here is I would select my materials paintbrush. And you can do that in any 3D view. You can then use this little eyedropper and you can say, I want to copy this material. So I'm going to click on the cabinet and then I want to apply it to the edge of that panel. And then I can right click and select finish. I'm going to go back in the 2D. Now for anything that again, like I mentioned, if I want to create um, a crown molding, so anything that's going to run vertically, uh, sorry, horizontally in my design, I will use an actual member. So I'm going to go to members. I'm going to go in, I'm going to select a two by four. And I'm going to set the base height to be seven feet. I'm going to press tab to lock that in. So again, we know the cabinets are sitting seven feet off of the ground. So I want my trim to sit seven feet off of the ground. I'm now just going to trace around my cabinetry. And we're just going to get to there. We're going to go to now this one. We're going to stop right there. And we're going to go right click and we're going to select finish. So right now I have my trim going in and we're gonna go right click, select all similar. And I'm gonna change the color of this trim. So we're gonna go in the line work and I'm gonna change the members to be that one there. I'm gonna say by layer, this should be blue. And we'll say blue. So we're now going to see, why are you not changing? What are you doing to me here? Uh, we're gonna select these. Properties, line work, oh, 2D footprint, that's why. And we're gonna change these to be blue. There we go. So now I can see that those are in that blue color. If I go into the navigation camera and I select these, I want you to take notice of where the grips are. So right now I have these grips and I can see that they're at the top of the member. So I'm going to highlight each one of these. Right click properties. Under the details tab, I can control where I want that grip to be. I know that I want it to be seven feet from the bottom of the trim. Right now it's measuring to the top of the trim. So I'm going to say bottom. I'm also going to change the name and say cabinet trim. I'm going to go to the basic tab and instead of being a rectangular solid, I'm going to go to custom. I'm going to select a profile and I'm just going to grab a crown uh, molding here. Uh, we'll use we'll use number three and we'll say OK. I'm going to adjust this so that the uniform scale is turned off and I want the depth to be two inches. And I want the height to be, we'll just make it a nice round number. We'll say four inches. And then we're going to say, okay. So what that is now done, and we're going to go back into the properties. And under details, I did forget to do this. Under details, we want this to miter if possible. So whenever it meets with another member, it's going to automatically miter the edges for us. Now I can start to adjust the fine tune placement of the actual trim and where I want it to sit. So I'm just gonna move these edges around 
so that it sits exactly where I would expect it to sit in the design. So again, we're just gonna move these edges like so. And you can get, again, as accurate as you want. So you can move these edges around so that they sit where you want them to be placed so that when you're looking at it, you're gonna see the crown molding above your cabinetry. Now, again, it's using the wrong color. So once again, I'm gonna use my materials paintbrush. If you remember, I changed the name of the trim to be cabinet trim. So I'm gonna go in and say, I want to apply all similar. And I'm just gonna click on one of them and now all of them are going to change. So as long as they all have the same name, it should change the actual um, cabinet for you or the trim for you. And then this one should be snapping to the edge of this one here. So we're gonna, looks like it's missing this edge. I need to snap to, there it is right there. So I'm gonna snap it to right there. Now, what I can do here is I can actually take this one and this one and this one, and I can just go right click and mirror. And I'm just gonna mirror this around the center of the wall. And I don't wanna delete the other one out. And now I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna go duplicate, and I'm just gonna duplicate this to here. And sorry, we're not gonna do that. Edit, undo. Select all similar. I did forget to, again, go into the properties and under details, I want to make sure that it breaks at other members so that it does not join them together. So again, we're gonna duplicate this guy to here. And then that should edit undo, properties. Break out other members. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go duplicate down to here. I'm just gonna stretch this guy and then we're gonna elevate this up. And this one should be seven foot eight inches high. And we're gonna say, okay. And then we're just gonna duplicate or move this guy into place. And we're gonna move him in so that he sits at the edge of this cabinet in the edge here and then we're going to move so that he sits correctly in there and then we're again just going to do that process one more time so we're going to duplicate this guy out to here and then we're going to move it into place and we're going to elevate this one up to the seven foot eight height we're going to move like so, and then we're gonna move this again so that it sits where we want it to be placed. And then once we get it into place, as soon as I snap these two together, it should miter those corners. And then we're just gonna mirror this around the center of this member. And no, we don't wanna delete the original. So what we've essentially done there is we've now created a new cabinet. What is going on here? Uh, around our cabinet or a new trim around our cabinets and that should be going to there I'm not quite sure what it was snapping to so we're going to move this so that it sits over our cabinet correctly so we're going to see that and once we have the one added in we can actually just mirror the other one around so we're just going to take these three pieces, and again, we're just gonna mirror based on the center of that wall, and no, we don't wanna delete the original out. So you can very quickly add in your trim around the tops of your cabinetry to again, show a more custom looking kitchen um, by just adding in trim and adding in members. We're gonna drop a window in real quick so that we can actually look out our window here. So we're just gonna go in and say, I wanna do a double casement. I want that to be a 
Uh, let's just do a three foot six by three foot window. And we're going to center it on the wall like so. And then in my view filter, I'm just going to turn off the tags for windows. And then we'll say, okay, so now we're not going to see that tag. And again, you'll now see the window between those cabinets. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add in a countertop over our island. So right now our countertop is sitting based on our cabinets themselves. We can add in our own custom countertop if we want to as well. So I'm going to select all of these cabinets and I'm just going to hold my shift key down to select them. And then I'm going to right click. I'm going to go into properties and under properties and under details. I'm just going to say, do not show the counter. And that's going to get rid of the countertop for us. So what we're going to see there is again, now we're going to see the cabinets, but we're not going to see the countertop over top of our cabinets. Now I can go back into 2D. And there's a couple of ways that I can do this. I can add in a countertop if I want to. So under interiors, I can add in a countertop. But if I want a more custom looking countertop, if I want to be able to adjust exactly um, how I want the edges to look, I'm going to use a surface. So I'm going to go to the building tab and I'm going to select the surfaces option. And under the surfaces, we're going to have a general surface and you see marble countertop. Now this is new to version 17. So if you are using an older version, you're not going to see that folder. So uh, again, this is going to be something that's available in version 17. And I'm just going to grab that marble countertop and I'm going to pick my points. I'm just going to pick here and here. And I can see that that is now at two foot eight, but I want there to be a bit of an overhang. So I'm going to add a foot to that. So we're going to go two foot eight. We're going to say three foot eight. So I'm just going to type in three foot eight. And then we're going to bring our cursor all the way across. And again, with snap tracking turned on, it's going to find our points and I can just simply place in that countertop. Once I say okay to that, it's gonna ask me to define the surface. Well, I know that this is a flat surface, so I'm gonna make sure it's flat. And I also know that it should be three feet high. That's the height of my counters. So I'm gonna say okay. So what that has now done is it's now added in that countertop over top of our kitchen cabinets. I can fine tune this, and this is where you can go in and select the move edge option. And you can select an edge. You can say, I want to move that out one inch. I want to move this edge out one inch. So this is just giving me that overhang. And we're going to move this edge out one inch. And then this edge, I actually want to curve it. I want a nice curved island countertop here. So I'm going to go right click, curve. And now I can curve the edge of that countertop. And now when I look at that kitchen in a 3D view, I'm now going to see how that looks. Now, alternatively, we added in a island that had cabinets on both sides. We're seeing the face on both sides. And maybe we want an elevated breakfast bar instead of a continuous island. So you want to do something like that then what you're gonna do here is we're gonna go back into 2D. I'm actually gonna take this and I'm gonna snap the edge all the way back to here. We're gonna change the height to be, again, like so, let's just go up a foot, uh, we'll go up three foot six. So we'll say three foot six inches, and then we'll say, okay. I'm gonna select all of these cabinets. So these ones are all the same, so I'm gonna select those four. We're gonna go into the properties of those cabinets. And here you can see it says both sides. Well, no, I only want this to be one sided. So now what it's going to do is going to create a back panel. And I'm going to say, uh, I also want to add the countertop back in. And we're going to get rid of the backsplash. I'm going to say, okay. I'm now going to take this cabinet. Since it was a different size, I'm going to do it separately. We're going to make sure it's one sided. Details, show countertop, get rid of the backsplash. Say so, okay. So now what we've done is we have taken this breakfast bar and we've elevated it up. We have the original cabinets back in. 
Now I need to create a panel that's going to hold up this um, countertop. So you can do a wall in here, you can do a member in here. It really all depends on what the style is that you're working with when it comes to the design. I'm gonna use a wall. I'm just gonna go wall. I'm gonna grab a two by four interior wall and I'm just gonna go in from here and I'm just gonna drop in that wall like so. And then gonna move it into place. So we're just gonna move that guy to the corner. And what we're gonna see now when I go into a 3D view is a wall that shoots all the way up to the ceiling. Well, I can go in and say, well, that wall only needs to be three foot, six inches high. So I'm gonna change the height to be, uh, we're gonna say three foot, five inches high so that the countertop sits right on top of the wall itself. So you can fine tune exactly how you want things to be laid out. Um, and if I do a navigation here, when we walk around this kitchen, we'll be able to see that there's a bit of a backsplash on that particular wall itself. So again, you can customize your kitchens using all kinds of different tools. It all really depends on what the style is that you're trying to achieve uh, when you're creating your kitchens. So that covers everything that I wanted to show you in today's class. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to open up the questions and answers period. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and type those in. While those are coming through, I am going to go through over just a quick review of what we've covered in today's class. So Envisioner provides a number of building and editing tools to help you create virtually any kitchen design. The Kitchen Builder Wizard builds a complete kitchen for you automatically based on the settings that you define. You can edit the individual components to suit your design needs after it has been inserted. You can also use the cabinet tool to install individual cabinets wherever needed in your designs. Each individual cabinet can be customized, moved, or deleted. You're again gonna use the member and column tools to create vertical and horizontal elements in your design, like fridge panels and cabinet trim. And then you can also use the surfaces tool to create uh, custom horizontal elements like countertops. So I'm not seeing any questions at the moment. So again, I am just going to pause here for a moment to see if anybody is finishing up with any questions they may have. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the class, I will be sending out an email that has the document in it. And you can again, go ahead and try that out on your own. Should you happen to have any questions while going over the documents, again, please don't hesitate. Give our support department a call. They'll be happy to help you out with any of your questions. All right, perfect. Well, there doesn't appear to be any questions today. So I do wanna thank everybody for attending. I do look forward to speaking with you all again very soon. Thank you very much, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day.